We're back. Two weeks in a row. Two weeks in a row, baby. It's not going to be two weeks in a row. I'll take care of two in edit. But okay. two episodes in a row. <laughs> two episodes in a row. <laughs> Thank you for coming back and checking out Attack on Show, the show where we find what's worth watching on mm -hmm. all streaming services, movies, TV shows, the internet, the World Wide Web. We've got you covered. As always, I'm Robbie. And I'm Patrick Harney. We've got an exciting episode for you today. We're going to catch you up with a bunch of movie news in only a minute with Movie Maniac Minute. And then on Bingeworthy, we're taking a look at Hulu's Solar Opposites. Yes. An animated adult cartoon. Don't let the animation turn Very, you off. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and then, Beacon Rewind, we're taking a look at Christopher Nolan's mm. and Leonardo DiCaprio's Inception. Yes. These are both your recommendations. You know... We're going to have to see if this relationship lasts after this episode. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, it does. Uh, uh, but we're going to wrap things up with yeah. an I Miss My Am TV. Our favorite band from across the river in Windsor, the Blue Stones, released a new album. We're going to show you a clip of a live recording of Shaking Off the Rest. I love this version. The album version is just as amazing, but this is a cool new take on it. You're going to like it. Stick around for all that fun. Before we get to all that, they need to click like. Subscribe. What else do they got to do? You got to comment. Yes. Right? And share. Sharing's caring. Sharing is caring. Common theme going forward. You're a very caring person, Patrick. I love that about you. Thank you. <laughs> As always, again, I'm Robbie. I'm Patrick Harney. And Patrick, tell them what they're watching. Attack on show. All right, we're back. Hey. A lot of movie news going on, so we're really excited to bring it to you. Yeah. And not in a lot of time, because... Frankly, my ADD can't last very long. So I like to hit this news up with Movie Mag Minute. So I'm going to head over to Studio B. All right. You going to be okay here? I'll be all right. All right. I'll just, I've got, I'll just, I got my drink here and I'm Some just Some peanut butter out. whiskey. Mm -hmm. We're going to get you caught up. Movie Maniac Minute. <laughs> All right, thanks, Patrick, and welcome to Studio B for this week's Movie Maniac Minute. We got a lot of news to bring to you in only one minute. So, Patrick, do me a favor, flip the switch, and let's start the clock. We're kicking things off with my identical arm twin, Chris Hemsworth, posting a picture that they have recently wrapped filming on Thor Love and Thunder. Things are not looking so bright over at Netflix as they've canceled all plans for season two of Jupiter's Legacy. Although all is not lost, as a spin-off series has already gotten the green light. This spin-off will focus on the villains called Super Crooks. It looks like we are getting a new revision of our favorite heroes in a half shell, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. A new movie is being started and is being headed up by no other than Seth Rogen? Let's just hope he can do for Ninja Turtles what Jason Segel did for the Muppets. And in final news, Indiana Jones 5 has finally gotten the green light to start filming next week in the UK. Although oddly enough, Harrison Ford is going to be 80 years old when that comes out. I hope this turns out. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all the time that I've got. We're going to head back to Studio A as we've got a fantastic episode lined up for you. Do not click on anything else. <laughs> a lot of stuff, right? <laughs> We got you all informed. What'd you think? Oh, uh, I loved it, man. I'm excited. It's a far walk to Studio B. It is. <laughs> but I loved the... <sighs> yeah. It's a little slap at the table. It takes a lot. Sit down. I'm ready to unwind. What do you want to do? You want to do uh, Be Kind Rewind with Inception or Binge Worthy with Solar Opposites? You pick. Those are some big choices. Let's start with Inception. <laughs> all right. Be Kind Rewind. And we're going all the way back to 2010. That's a decade. More, More than. than. Man, I forgot to carry my one, didn't I? Yeah, you got to drop the two. That. Always do that. Anyway, we're taking a look at Christopher Nolan's 2010 film starring Leonardo DiCaprio, Inception. And this was a Patrick recommendation. Patrick, why did you want us to review this on Be Kind Rewind? Well, for one, Chris Nolan is my favorite director of all time. And Inception in particular is such a unique film and the performances in it are just so phenomenal. I mean, Leo, Joseph, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Tom Hardy, 
Um, is it Cillian or Killian? Killian. Killian, Killian Murphy, Peaky Killian Blinders. Killian Murphy, yes, Peaky Blinders. Um, Marion Cotillard. I mean, just Sir Michael Caine. Um, I mean, everybody is just... Elliot Page. Elliot Page. Everybody in that movie is phenomenal. And, yeah, it's just definitely... Because it is on Netflix. Yes, currently on so, Netflix. So, I think that it's been a decade. It's a great film to uh, kind of... Go back in time and check it out. Actually, know? correction, you need the Amazon Prime right now to watch it. Uh, it's not on Netflix. It looks like they've removed it. So, since when? Attack on Show is getting you guys up to speed. Right now, it's currently showing only on Amazon Prime. So, if you're a Prime member, you can watch it, which, what, 200 million people are. Uh, you can definitely Bush check League. this out. I like Amazon. No, uh, I do like Amazon. It's, what, yeah. So, I am curious, and I'm only going to nitpick a little bit here. What is this movie about? I want you to explain. What is it not about? <laughs> All right. <laughs> no, it's it's about exploring uh, the the dr the whole dream within a dream thing, right? It's about a thief that he's got this like ability to go into people's dreams and like steal information from them and steal like secrets from them, and that's and that's Leonardo DiCaprio. Now. He has this team that they all have different different uh, jobs for their. It's kind of like a heist of like information. Dream investigators. Yeah, it's like a, it's almost like a heist of dreams. Almost. Okay. There's some corporate espionage going on there in is. this film that Leo is trying to help to solve. <sighs> okay. Uh oh. Yeah. No, I am. I am going to be <laughs> in the minority here because this film's an 8.8 .8 out of 10 on imdb it's an 87 percent on rotten tomatoes 91 percent of google <laughs> users liked it not i'm part of the nine i have to say i'm part of the nine percent of this film and i'm not trying to be overly critical i'm a, I'm a huge christopher nolan fan however i think this movie Christopher Nolan is great at confusing you. He's great at mind fucking you. He's great. Whoa. At, yes, it's beeped. Uh, he's great at <gasps> those plot twist films, which makes The Dark Knight so amazing. Mm -hmm. Memento so amazing. Inception to me, I felt like after The Dark Knight, he just got a green light to do whatever he wanted and he created Inception. He got the usual cast of suspects. Mm. He's got all the usuals that he works with. Tom Harding, Killian Murphy, Michael Caine. He, he, he went and gathered... Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Joseph Gordon -Levitt. He, he, he gathered everybody that he'd already worked with be, because of his name and, and credibility. And again, I'm in the minority because everybody loves this film and made this movie. However, to me, the plot almost confuses itself. I feel like they went so confusing, it made no sense. It got to the point sometimes, I remember sitting in a theater watching this movie of just kind of laughing because I just felt like they and themselves got lost in this plot, especially with the ending. And we're well past the spoiler time frame because this is over a decade old. This is a movie where I am just a fan as the next person to want to be left with a cliffhanger ending. I love yeah. those. I love the idea of being able to create the ending in your own head. But it's not necessary all the time. And this movie, for all of the questions that it raised, for every what if, all the possibilities, this movie, after two and a half hours or whatever the runtime is, because it's a long film, I felt deserved an ending, and he didn't give it to you. And I was really disappointed with the ending of this film. This one, you could have just solved it for us. You could have just told us the ending, and I would have been a lot happier with it, because it was just so... It kept going layer after layer after layer. And you know what? Dreams are a fun topic to cover in a movie. And the bar is set so high from Nightmare on Elm Street 3, Dream Warriors. In the name of Lorik, Prince of Elves, Demon Be Gone. That this movie didn't live up to those expectations. I'll say it right now. Because to me, when Leonardo DiCaprio and Joseph Gordon-Levitt know they're in the dreams and they're doing this investigating, and I get they had these loopholes because they didn't want people to know they're in a dream. You should have some sort of superpower. You should have some sort of like, I know I'm in a dream. They touched on it with the whole zero gravity and yeah. like Joseph Gordon-Levitt knowing how to maneuver through. But to me, I wanted to see in those moments when they were alone in the dream level investigating, fly. Like, like the whole world's manipulating around you, but yet you're not doing anything cool. You're just kind of sitting there for the ride. Could you imagine how hokey though it would have been if you have this crazy landscape of a movie and then they just take off. Neil, I think it would have been just as cool. Whoa. 
when the trailers came out and they 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 really pushed that zero gravity sequence with Joseph yeah. Gordon Levitt, um, kind of like like flying. Mm -hmm. They really pushed that in the marketing. So me going into this film, I expected some of that, especially coming off Batman. He's a you know he's a he's a he's a superhero director. He, he, yeah. And, and he, I do, I really bought into the fantasy aspect of this film. And when I got there, it was just like, this is a typical type mystery, which is cool. But you're adding layer after layer after layer after layer of dream sequence that now I'm just so confused. I don't understand the timeline. And then it just ends with a spinning top that kind of wobbles. Did it wobble? <sighs> Do you think it wobbled? I think it did. I appreciate people's, like I said, I, I'm the minority here. I, oh, I'm going to get a bunch of hate comments below. Definitely going to get one just thumbs no, down. <laughs> I'm, on, I'm on the good side. Uh, but that's how I felt. And, and I appreciate the people who like this. And that's what I yeah. like about this show is I want both opinions explored on these things uh, for those reasons. Because I think sometimes when people see these ratings or they see these numbers, they, they kind of question, like, am I wrong for not liking this? Yeah. No, you're not. That's the beauty of opinions. That's the beauty of being able to watch these things or change the channel because there's other options out there. Yes. And I do got to say Christopher Nolan for all his greatness. I don't, you know, I, I don't rate him as high as a lot of people because like, I think he ruined... The Dark Knight Rises. I thought that was a terrible follow-up to The Dark Knight. Man. Speak of the devil, and he shall appear. What? I just feel like it got so commercially advertised, you had no option but to like it because yeah. of the cast, because of its budget, because of at the time of coming out of Dark Knight, everyone was so Christopher Nolan hungry. Yeah. I, I would be curious now, over a decade later, for somebody green to watch this movie and give an honest opinion of it. I would be really curious, without the hype surrounding it, if they would feel it's as good as what we remember it being when it came out. You know why I like it so much? I would love to hear. That's nice. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I like it so much because of how intricate, in my opinion, of how intricate the story is, but yet he's still, just when you think that you're gonna lose it, that you're completely gone, from the story, because like I can't follow this anymore. He gives you a little nugget to keep you in. Nolan or Leo? Nolan. Okay. He gives you a little bit of something to keep you in the story. Um, and he does that through his characters, through the writing obviously. And and so that's why I think I like it so much is because he, he wants you to get confused. He wants you to be like, what the hell is happening? But yes. yet he's holding your hand the whole time. Were you happy with the ending? When you I was, got to it. I was happy with the ending because I like the fact that <clears throat> I don't think that is a that type of story, that type of subject, the way everything goes. I don't think it's something that, that can have, like, that you could put a bow tie on and phew, call it good. I think it has to be left open, open-ended. And but to this day, people hound him just for an answer. Exactly. And that's the whole point. I think it's people because he won't it. Because he won't give it to him. Oh, I thought he did. I don't think he did. Mm. Don't quote me on that. But hey, if he did, put it in the let comments below. Yeah, <laughs> let us know the ending below. Uh, to wrap it up, yeah. I, I'm going to say I think there's other movies out there to watch. I would pass, even if you're an Amazon subscriber, um, on this film. Just I do think there's better content or newer movies that have come out. However, if you want to prove me wrong, then watch and tell me I'm crazy. Uh, Patrick, you would recommend watch? I would recommend the watch because of the performances. If, if, if you don't like that type of story at all, at least watch it for the performances, especially Leo's performance. He does a really, really good job. When and, is he not good? But Tom, and Tom Hardy also does a really good job. But I just want to Can say... Can you understand what Tom Hardy is saying? <laughs> he, wasn't wearing, he wasn't wearing a mask on his face the whole time. <laughs> but I will say that I appreciate the fact that you're willing to come out and say that you don't really like it that much. I understand that you're wrong, but... yes. I'm always wrong. No, no, Ask my no, wife. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I would say, I would say, get on it, and he would say pass. All right, and that's okay. So you have it, attackers. Go check it out, or Decide don't check it yourself. out. Or if you've already watched it, let us know in the comments below what you think. Who was right? Who was wrong? What you thought of the movie? We'd love to hear your opinions. We'll get back to you on future episodes to see, uh, I guess, who won. Yeah, just know that. I will come after you. <laughs> I will find you. <laughs> and All right. Kill you. you want to move on to Binge Worthy with Solar Opposites? Let's do it. Speaking of which, man, that's fitting. <laughs> Listen up now. This is serious. I'm just wondering. Uh, Did you no!
Yeah. We are on to Binge Worthy. <laughs> yes. And this is a Hulu original series. It is. An animated series brought to you by the Rick and Morty folks. Yes. Um, yes, Justin Roiland is his name. They created Rick and Morty. Solar Opposites we're talking about. Yes. Uh, yes, this is, uh, it's only been out for a season. It came out May 2020. Yep. Uh, it's had one season. It is about uh, basically a family of aliens crash land on Earth, or they take refuge here on Earth, and they hate the planet, or at least <laughs> the one does, yeah. trying to find a way to get home. Yep. Meanwhile, the others are trying to adapt. It feels like I'm the only Slorpion who wants to escape this planet. And nobody really notices that they're aliens, or they do. Yeah, they kind of do, but they just live with it. over it. Yeah. Uh, but it's an animated series. Much of the same style of Rick and Morty. Very much so. Uh, same style. Um, Patrick, I'm going to throw this over to you. Okay. This was your recommendation. Uh, I am, you know, again, this is one of those shows, 8 out of 10 on IMDb. It's a 96% on Rotten Tomatoes. Like or not like, or what do you think of this series? I love it. I think it's hilarious. Oh, don't throw that out. I can sell it. It has an unstable gray hole inside. You're an unstable gray hole. <laughs> For those of you who have watched Rick and Morty and liked it, it's not quite as dark. Uh, it's not as, um, I guess you could say, raw as, as Rick and Morty is. But it still has that adult humor. And there are a lot of elements that I found that are like there's a lot of family elements even though it's a very when I say family element I mean the um, the relationships in the show you can tell that one of the staples of the show is the family unit that is built amongst <laughs> the you aliens said unit. We may be trapped on this world, on the brink of mass extinction, plagued by a species that destroys the environment, but at least we have each other. Oh, oh shit! Um, and, yeah, and, and so, but there's so much ridiculousness that happens, and things that could be outlandish to us as humans are completely normal to, to these aliens, you know? Like, when they think that they have to spend as much time with the two children, they say, okay, well, we just need to figure out a plan to kill them. So that way we don't, and we can get new ones, you know, like it's, it's just, it's a lot of fun and it's just a, it's one of those shows that you can just throw on and not have to think too much. Yeah, you definitely don't have to think too much. <laughs> uh, I give the show <laughs> uh, credit on its imagination. Um, mm -hmm. So pre on a previous episode, we talked about Avenue 5 and I appreciated its clever humor. I look at Solar Opposites as the opposite of that. Uh, to me, it's very crutch humor. Um, okay. And this is a very personal opinion of mine to where I'm not big on swearing. I'm not big, you know, in writing to like add swearing. If, if you have to swear to make the humor, then you're miss like you're not writing a good joke is kind of how I've always That's viewed a good point. this. No making odd people or any of that outer limits bullshit. I've always looked at that type of style of writing of it's crutch humor. It's too easy to just throw a swear, especially when you're in an animated series. An animated series swearing, people are going to be thrown off and kind of laugh because they're seeing a cartoon swear. <laughs> to me, Solar Opposites takes that to a new level. Like, they use that almost too much. Yeah. Um, I felt like that they took the easy way out on a lot of its, its writing style of humor and just went cutthroat, swear at things that, like, we're just too simple to go after. We are your new best friends. You guys aren't gonna try to f me, are you? No, 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 no. That's a good point. Um, there were a couple parts I did laugh. I'm not gonna say like I hated it every minute through. There were a couple things I kind of laughed at where I thought, okay, I can keep kind of pushing th through this and see if it gets better. I only made it three episodes and I just stopped. Mm. I, at that point, I had kind of said, there's other things for me to watch out there because of that crutch um, and call me a sensitive butterfly, however you want to say it. I just, to me, it was, they were kind of going to cutthroat edgy swearing or wherever to get that quick laugh. You know what I do when I'm out of ideas? Cocaine. And then I get like a million ideas at once. And, and to me, there's things that you could take the story and really have a lot of fun with, like the aliens crash landing, their views on Earth and how they're not happy here. I, I was really excited to start watching, but... The wall people? The... I don't remember oh, that. You didn't make it that far. No. There's a whole civilization of humans that have been shrunk down 
to little oh. tiny people that they put into a yes. wall. And they, build, they build a whole civilization inside of a wall. I got to say, that was the highlight to me. Mm. Um, that storyline is what kind of actually kept me watching. Uh, so They do more of it. They, they, and I got to say, it was funny because, yes, the aliens will shrink people down, the, the, the kids, and they throw them in a wall of like, it's like a, like a hamster it's like an ant farm almost. Yeah. And they just let these people, and now they've created the civilization and the shrunk down world. That kept me watching. Yeah. I was more interested in that than I was the aliens. <laughs> uh, so it was like a, a side story that kept me more interested than the main characters, which I kind of, you know, I think by episode three, I don't even know that they really were in that episode. Like episode two, it was really heavy. Yeah. Three, they went away, and I just, I wasn't interested enough. But again, I'm also not a Rick and Morty fan. Uh, I haven't okay. watched it. I don't want to say I'm not a fan. I just not watched it. So, I don't know. If you've watched Rick and Morty and this more relates, then it would make more sense to like. Yeah, I, so I've watched Rick and Morty. I remember a friend of mine told me to watch Rick and Morty. And it took me a, a little while to get into it. Because I was like, I don't know if I can get with this, right? But then I really started watching and I started thinking of... <laughs> or I started really paying attention to the creativeness of the storylines. And the... Uh, the the performances of the voice actors and um because that's what i really look at is the performances and how they are and, and a great they, cast on the show it is yeah it, it it took me a bit to get into rick and morty but then once i did i was hooked and so when this came out i was all about it and there's two seasons yep is this airing on another is it a hulu original or does it air on a different channel as it well? is a, a hulu original hulu original so if you have hulu I'm going to say watch something else, <laughs> Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say go for it, you know, shoot go your shot. You're and already you, paying the month. It is, and it, or you are. And it is one of those shows that you, this is one where I, I am confident that it'll be split. You'll either like it or you won't like it. With Inception, I, felt, I feel like the majority of people that we say to go watch it, that watches it, will like it. That's just, that's my bold prediction. I like it. Comments below will tell us that. But Solar Opposites, I think, we'll see. You what, think it's really divided? It's either hit or miss. I think it could be. There's a, no gray. It could be a complete Solar Opposite. I'm sorry. I that was well done. I immediately regretted that, that was, the second I said it. Did you prepare that? Did no, you? I didn't. I just thought of it on the spot. It but came off well. It hurt. You want to listen to some music? Yeah, sure. Let's I'm get missing weird. my two. Let's see if we can get together on music. All right. Yeah. I dig it. My favorite part of the show, I miss my MTV. Do you miss MTV? Were you around when there were videos even on it? Yes, I was around when there was videos <laughs> on it. I remember VH1 had them, MTV had the music videos, and I remember I would get up and uh, I would go and sneak and watch those like in the summertime because I wasn't supposed to because my parents didn't want me to. But I they didn't would... want you watching videos? Was it like a Footloose house? Well, no, no. But at that point, <laughs> at that point, the videos were a little bit more risque. Oh, so, damn you, Silk. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're bringing you one of our favorite bands uh got to interview with them on tour before covid damn you covid uh the blue stones out of windsor ontario just released a brand new album and this album is amazing beginning to end i gotta tell you i i have listened to this album i can't even tell you how many times and the track i'm about to play isn't even my favorite but they're all so good that mm. I wanted to highlight this one. This was the first release that they uh, decided to release officially off the new album. It's called Shaken Off the Rust. However, I'm not going to play you the album version. Um, because of COVID, I give uh, the Blue Stones a lot of credit. They've, they're finding ways to try and interact with the fans. They're constantly going live on Instagram, uh, cool. finding ways to reach out, do interviews. They've reached out to us. They want to do interviews back on the Attack on Show. I can't wait till we open up the border because I want them in studio jamming live how awesome is that gonna be that would be ah, sweet i'm setting the goal now i achieve my goals i will have them in studio that i'm gonna sell that for now i'm, I'm, right. I'm just gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna i can appreciate I'm gonna that tell and myself I, that now. and i've never heard them so this is my first time hearing it as well these guys are awesome this is a live recording this was their way because obviously you can't perform live you can't go touring right now so they they got together in this wicked like antique type studio and did like a live set uh and Basically, they change Shaking Off the Rust to start acoustically and then get into its awesome jam. I can't say any more about it. We're going to play you guys a little snippet. Enjoy. This is a live version of the Blue Stones, Shaking Off the Rust. So I'm shaking off the rust. 
That was your introduction to Blue Stones. I dig them. I'm yeah? Gonna, I'm, yes. I'm, I'm gonna have to look into more of their stuff because I like that sound and I like the I like the whole production value of it. So yeah, I'm, I'm definitely gonna look into their stuff. Justin and Tarek, you guys are awesome. It, 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 for a two-man band, the sound value- That's a two-man that band? Yeah, it's just the two of them. He's on drums, he's on guitar, vocals, and- Whoa. It, it's insane that the two of them produce that, that type of sound. Like, it, I, I, I was blown away from that from the get-go years ago when I found them of that, you know, I would listen to the album versions and then when I started seeing live videos, I was like, that's only two people. Uh, totally cool people. We got to meet them in, in uh, Toronto uh, while they're on tour just before COVID hit. Uh, these guys are amazing. Check out the entire album because you're gonna like track one all the way to the very end and then you're gonna loop it back around because every single track on this album is amazing. These guys are super talented. I love the Blue Stones. Make sure you check them out. Leave us comments below. We've got links below forwarding you over to them, but I'd love to hear your guys' opinions. Patrick, you're sold on them, right? Yeah, I like them. I'm definitely gonna check out more. Uh, I'm gonna hold you to the whole, uh, you know, like from track one all the way down and loop it back around, so we'll see. I I'm down for the challenge and I guarantee right. I will succeed because it's right. an amazing album. Anyway, everybody, Speaking of loving everything from beginning to end, Attack on Show, always delivering, beginning to end. Patrick, you've done an amazing job. I appreciate you being here. Another episode, you're killing it. It's, it's just so natural for you. I, I appreciate it. Amazing acting skills. It's just gas. <laughs> All right, make sure you click like and subscribe. Subscribe, share, comment. Yes. Hit that bell because that bell. Notification button. That's huge. It's big time. I've known people who go in serious depression when they've realized they've missed episodes that we've put out and they didn't know it was out. It's so actually a problem. Don't let that happen to you. <laughs> Click the bell and make sure you watch the new episodes as they're released. As always, I'm Robbie. And I'm Patrick Harney. And we thank you for watching. Patrick, tell them what they just watched. You just watched Attack on Show. Uh -huh.